When I think about African fashion, mm -hmm. I think that you know this is one area where Africans can actually contribute to the world. Yeah. For too long, I think we've been beneficiaries. It's always yeah. like, oh, you know, we need it's, aid, we need money, bring us yeah. money. But now we're like, you know what? We have clothes. This is we what can. we do in Africa. Let's yeah. contribute. You know, we're coming to contribute globally. Mm. So my next question is, in terms of what would you say to an African who is thinking about, oh, should I buy grey? Should I buy from an African designer? Like, mm. what do you want them to think about when they're buying your clothes? I think... Uh a, a, any African person who's not in Nigeria who wants to buy into African fashion that is in Africa, one of the things you have to think about is it is raw. It is so, it is not, it is so beautifully like done. Like there's so much um, raw passion that has gone into what is being made. We're not, I mean, we're all thinking in that direction now of being commercial, appealing to a wider audience, appealing to a global audience. But the first thing that inspires is exactly what is around us, like what, what, what are the techniques around us. It is so important. And in buying into African fashion, you are promoting that. You can tell a story of what you're wearing. You can tell me, you can, if somebody asks you, oh, what is this thing? I can tell you, you can tell me if you ask, I can tell you like this is how I came about it. That is slowly dying in international fashion because it's in, in three months, that design is out of the door and something new comes in. An African designer, she's still designing or he's still designing for longevity. He's not design, he's designing classics in his head. So you're helping to promote that and you're helping to boost the economy. You're giving that designer confidence to say, I should continue along this path because locally now, African fashion is not being promoted as, as greatly as it should. They're, we're getting some traction, but there's still hesitance from like the government to support the, the industry. There's still um, hesitation from um, even international markets to buy into it. So in buying one piece and telling that, helping that designer tell that story, you're helping to push African fashion to a, a, a wider scale. Yeah, yeah, and I really believe in that because I always say that, you know what, it takes, you guys go through so much. I mean, yeah. I have a lot of designer friends yeah. and I know the labor of love yeah, that, that goes, goes into, into your it. clothes. And for me, that's why I buy it because yeah. I know that every piece, you've actually labored yeah. you know, to bring that piece out. So, so all my audience who are watching, you know, buy African clothes. We need to support, you know, this because they're doing amazing stuff. But if we don't support it, then they're not going to be able to get anywhere. We so push a lot of culture into it, into yeah. our clothes. So yeah. you get that experience as well, especially if you haven't been back in a while. Yeah, that's true. Like, that's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah. So my next question is, what are some of the challenges in terms of making clothes in Nigeria? Because I know at the moment, Nigeria is going through an economic downturn. So yeah. what are some of the challenges? Like, yeah. <laughs> in general, even before the economic downturn. Even, even before the economic downturn, there was always, we don't have any like structured system in place in fashion. So for example here, you know when the seasons are, you know what your timelines are, if you want to make it to the stores. You have buyers, you have um, people who are dedicated seamstresses, you have people who are dedicated pattern cutters, you have people who are dedicated um, textile designers. In Nigeria, I mean, I can't speak for the whole of Africa, but in Nigeria, you are that person. You as a designer, wow. you are the designer, you are the curator, you are the textile designer, you are the pattern cutter, you are sometimes the tailor. You run your own little um, country in your little studio, making sure everything comes together is like, it's so difficult. Now, I, I would say that for before, I think we're getting better. For example, now we have a fashion week, Lagos Fashion and Design yeah. Week that happens every October. So any serious designer who wants to showcase to an international audience knows I have this one platform. I need to take myself seriously. If I can make myself serious enough to be on this platform, I already have one leg in there. Like I'm meeting potential people that can help me. And they are really, really trying hard to bring in buyers, to bring in um, other people that, other influencers across the world that can help you push your market. They've done such amazing work. We, they've helped us so much at, at Grey. Lagos Fashion and Design Week with um, British Council, they were able to bring me to London for London Fashion Week wow. and also to attend like a week-long um, 
a series of seminars where I was able to learn more about how I can push my business further. So they're doing amazing things in that direction to help us grow. With the economic downturn, um, <laughs> you know what, I think it's one of those like everyone is struggling that I feel like we're all just Nobody wants to increase their prices because already the cost of production is already high enough that you don't want to go higher, but we kind of have to. Otherwise, we're, I mean, all the things that we use to produce, the cost, the cost is going up. We import fabric sometimes, the cost of that is going up. Um, we, we have our own generators, the cost of petrol and diesel has gone up. We, in turn, cost of rent has gone up. So everything across the board has gone up. So it's a bit difficult, but, I guess this is where you see who's serious and who's not as well. Like, if you can survive this period and still make it work, then um, maybe you're, you're in it for the long run. And of course, there's a huge Buy Nigerian campaign that this has then boosted as well. Most people want to now say, oh, you know what, the cost of going to buy a designer dress in England is, is maybe too expensive now. Let me try one of the local designers and get that extra personal service. So that's happening as well. So it's not all bad news. And it's also motivated quite a few people to try and set up small factories okay, in Nigeria. Okay. So a lot of people are talking about it. So hopefully something good will come out of that. I don't want to own a factory, <laughs> but I'm happy to use somebody else's. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. I was going to ask you as well, like in terms of, you know, like I always say that I love entrepreneurs because I yeah. feel like you guys have some wild faith, you know, <laughs> something in terms of like when you in general, not just with mm. the downturn, but in general, when you're facing challenges in life, how yeah. do you overcome it? How do you deal with challenges? Um, it, it's hard. Mm. It, you, the first few times, it, it really does knock you down mm. because I guess when you're dreaming in the dream stage of being an entrepreneur, you really do imagine that you've come to solve the problems. Like the reason why you got in is like, oh, look, there's a gap in the market. I'm going to fix it. And the first few times that it knocks you down, you're like, whoa, I didn't expect that. but Obviously, you keep praying, you keep like asking for help, asking for support, and you don't give up. I, there's no, there's not, the, the lesson cannot be bigger than that. You do not give up because you keep learning and then you keep applying those things and it gets better. And if it doesn't work this time, if you fail, it's okay to fail and understand that you failed and learn from that and try again with, with your lessons. So that's definitely my lesson. These, these are the things that I've learned from doing wow. it. Like, wow. Thank you very much. Because even as a teacher, yeah. I always tell my students, don't be afraid to fail. Yeah. You know, you fail, you learn from your mistakes, pick yourself back up and try again. So thank you for sharing that as well. Done. And talk about it. Make sure, don't feel too ashamed to talk about that, the fact that you're not doing well. Because that's one thing, especially with... I always say African women, we, we are so embarrassed by our failures. Yes, we actually, always think that, yes, yeah. so we always feel like you can't talk about it, you can't say anything to anyone. The other day I went, into, I went to a, a brunch that um, the founder of Bella Ninja mm -hmm. organized and it was just a group of young um, African entrepreneurs doing different things and everyone was able to open up and share and you know it was so it was such an amazing time because yeah. I was like I'm amazing. not <laughs> alone I'm not alone like other people are facing and they're doing so well now so let me just keep at it let me just keep learning and doing better and it will work yeah, out then yeah. I, I can't even say to you that oh god I've reached my peak or I've even reached half of my peak no I'm still learning so much I'm still being disappointed daily but yeah you don't give up, yeah. you just keep going. I think going. that's a very important point, that we should share our failures. Yes. I think it's yeah. very important. Share your failures. No, because as everything is so perfect, especially in like the social media generation. Yeah, because like, you only oh, share the small life. successes, you know? and then you never share yeah, the, the, the low points. points. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Thank yeah. you for that. How would you describe your personal style? <laughs> my personal... I mean, when people <laughs> ask me that, I'm just like, what do you mean my personal <laughs> style? Um, it's, it's, it's derived from comfort. Comfort first. Um, I, I'm working with my hands. I'm working with um, fabric. I'm working with, I'm, I really do work with my hands a lot. And I, I'm running back and forth. So my clothes have to be as comfortable as possible. And also I, I have a seven month old baby. So she needs to be factored into what I wear on a daily basis. But I, I still love my shoes, so I sort <laughs> I of have to. I have to put I have to put that in. But 
even those have come to understand that they need to be more comfortable. I, I, I can't take the pain anymore. Um, and just as low maintenance as possible is, I, I will add one or two pieces once in a while, but comfort is key. Yeah. Okay. All right. The thing I noticed as well is the fact that with all your collections, not yeah. only are you the fashion designer, we mm. also fashion stylist as well. I mean, how does that work? Because your styling is like on point. Oh, thank you. On point. <laughs> um, I think with the fashion styling, I, I really draw inspiration from the great clients. Wow. Like whatever, the, when, like look at how you're dressed and I'm going to take this and I'm going <laughs> to apply that to one of the dresses we, we style for the next collection because sometimes you don't know how to wear the clothes. You're like, oh, it's a nice dress, but how am I going to wear it to work? Or how am I going to wear it? Or oh, I don't like my arms. Can you put sleeves? Like, no, I don't have to put sleeves. You can put sleeves by wearing a blouse under. Yeah. So we try and show that in our um, shoots. But I really do draw inspiration from my friends and great clients. Okay, because like, even today I was like, hmm, what would you think about the way I've styled yeah. it? What do you think? I did think I you, did, well? you did really well. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, what drives and motivates you in your work? Um, my biggest motivation has always been appreciation. It's maybe it's, it's, it's an artist creative thing where you still have that ego you want to, um, you, want, you, want your, you don't want your ego to get bruised. So the moment when, when someone comes and says, oh, I love what you're doing, you, you feel appreciated. You calling me to say you want to interview me is a moment of appreciation. Like somebody recognizes what you're doing. So no matter what the downturns have been in the last two, three months, I'm going to be like, look, I, I have a new audience. I, I really just met you less than six months ago and you become constantly in contact. And that's amazing. So those are the things, are the things that motivate me. Um, it also motivates me when someone I have no idea about, someone I've never met, no contact, not even third party wears my dress and I see I'm like, oh my God, that lady just wore my dress and she's walking across the road or she's going to a party and she feels really amazing and she feels fabulous. Those things, are, you, you can't yeah, buy that. You can't, you can't put any, any price on that. Um, of course, like also seeing how much the, the African fashion industry is growing is also motivation. It's like, ah, oh, I contributed to this. Ah, oh, I can say I was one of the primary um, people to start ready to wear fashion in Nigeria. Those things, you don't want to drop that ball. You want to keep going, you want to keep pushing yourself and saying, Let, what is my next step? What is the thing I'm going to do next to challenge myself? So there's a lot of motivation. There's a lot of things. What advice would you give to someone who's thinking about going into fashion designing? Like maybe one of my students at school would be like, you know mm. what? We've seen Rookie on your YouTube channel, yeah. like we want to go into fashion designing as well. What would you mm. advise them to do? Um, two things, read as much as possible about any fashion designers. It doesn't have to be Nigerian. Any fashion designers, read their story, their biographies, make sure you find out like how, what, those key things, those turning points in their lives, like read as many articles about different, not even just designers, create um, fashion entrepreneurs. So it doesn't have to be the person who's doing the create, creative designing, but the person who's running the business. Just read as much as possible. And two, try as much as possible to see if you can get an internship. Work for free for a designer because it does not, there's nothing more humbling than that. To be able to do that at, that, at such a base level where the only thing that you're taking home at the end of the day is how much hard work you put into it and make sure you do put your hard work into it because that will be you will reward yourself in the end when you start your own business or when you do when you get to the level where you say i'm now confident in my own design you will remember those moments where you were able to help somebody else do that and those lessons will really really come back to help you out because i can say that that was one of the main things that really helped me because I was working for a designer, I remember every time I feel frustrated with my tailors, I remember how he used to be frustrated with his tailors. I'm like, I'm not the only one. Somebody else has done it. Other people are going through this. It really helps you. It really helps you to learn, hone your skills, learn people's, people management as well. It just helps. So make sure you those two things, read about other people and try and get an internship. And also, now that you're already in the fashion industry, how mm. do you keep yourself growing? I mean, what professional development do you put yourself in? Um, so, like I said, uh, I applied for the Lagos Fashion Design Week um, Creative Entrepreneurship um, 
um, workshop and that really helps. So anytime I can find those sort of things, mm -hmm. I always try and apply for them. I always try and go for them. Any round table discussions about fashion in Nigeria, fashion anywhere, I always try and go. I always also try and make sure that I'm trying to have a conversation with a fashion entrepreneur at least once a month, a different one, just mm -hmm. to make sure that I might pick something up. It might be as small as make sure you go to bed at nine o'clock or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it just always helps and it always helps you to remind yourself of the things that motivated you. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are always like lots of courses online, short courses that you can always apply for. And I always try and read articles about fashion, mm -hmm. subscribe to as many like um, websites that do newsletters as possible about the business of fashion, not just the creative angle, mm -hmm. because that really helps. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for yeah, the advice. Thank you. Yeah. So my next question is, what is the best part of your job? <laughs> the best part of my job? Um, a finished collection. Wow. Yeah. Because you go through so many, so, there's so, so much doubt in doing a collection. So much, is it going to be finished? Am I going to, is my story going to come across? Are people going to appreciate it? Are they going to understand what I was trying to do? So. The moment I finished collection, even before there's been any reviews, the, that I can say, I, I can pat myself on the back and say, I finished that collection, well done. It's like finishing a dissertation or finishing a project, like, done. Pat yourself on the back, have a glass of wine, and then go, go to the bed. The <laughs> yes. So that always helps. Where do you see Grey 10 years from now? What, would you, what are your aspirations for Grey? Yeah, um, Grey 10 years from now should be a household name across Africa in every every major city in Africa you should be able to say I need a dress go to gray so that's my motivation across Africa also of course I want to be a household name amongst um, black Africans in the diaspora but of course it extends towards that I want aside from just the African um, community I want anyone to say oh you want to talk, you want um, something that inspire that is African inspired go to gray it doesn't matter if you're African or not just yeah so that's the target so my last question is if my subscribers or anybody who's watching this video mm. wants to buy your clothes mm. and they don't live in Nigeria where I mean what how can they go about how getting your clothes about? Well, at the moment we're, ch we're talking to two different stockists mm -hmm that are going to try and stock us in England okay. and they ship worldwide. So I will definitely pass on that information once we've secured that deal. Okay. Of course, um, if you go on our website as well, our stockists, a lot of them ship worldwide as well. Okay. The only issue, of course, is sometimes they might not have the style that you want. So the best thing right now is just shoot us an email, greyhq at gmail.com. And you can go to our website, www www.begrade.com.ng so if you go to either of those our instagram page we always try and update as much as yeah. possible with new styles <laughs> i love your instagram so, page. great project so you can go there and we we respond in in real time all the time so you should be able to you, you can't miss us no you can't <laughs> your clothes make a statement no one yes. can miss your clothes yeah so thank you very much thank Ruthie. you so I much i really appreciate it i mean to me like this is like a dream come true. Oh, it's I remember like you know, a couple of like months ago, I was thinking to myself, I want to speak to Ruki, but yeah. would she say yes? Yeah. And when I called you, you were like, Angela, I'll do it. You're in London for a few days, yeah. but you chose to do it. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank I you really so much for it. asking me as well. Seriously, <laughs> I, I, I know I keep saying that you probably think I'm being cheesy, but no, literally, I really, really appreciate that you called me out to ask me to do this. Thank you so, so much. So all the best. I wish you every success. Thank you. you know, keep making as beautiful And you clothes. too, you too, yeah. as you take that <laughs> lift that you're trying to take. Good luck. Seriously, I'm sure it'll be amazing because you you're such much. an amazing person. So Thank you. I really Good appreciate luck. that. So Thank all the you. Best. Thank you. Oops. <laughs>